Hello, Kevin Raber here from Photo PXL, and today I'm going to run through how to set up the Epson SC P900 printer and show you how easy it is and why this is one of my favorite printers I'm ever working with. The printer has the capability of printing up to 17 by 22 sheets, easy to set up. You can use it wirelessly or hook it up through USB or Ethernet uh, to your network, and it's a breeze. So let's get going. Let's take a look at what it's like to unpack this printer. Opening it up at the very top, let me pull out some cardboard, and the first thing we come with is this box. And inside this box, it's always fun to open up boxes, yeah. This is a, a box of ink, mainly. And a quick start manual. The CD tray, which I don't think I've ever used in my life. And all the starter ink that we need. Now this is starter ink. These are not full cartridges in here. So what we're gonna do before we really get going is, so I remember to do is we'll keep everything in the box and we shake them up just a little bit so that they're ready to go when we're ready to put them into the printer. So before I go much further, I would like to say that I am in my studio at the Indianapolis Art Center. I'm an artist in residence here, and this is a location where we're going to be doing all our fine art printing workshops, which we'll be offering numerous times throughout the year. So please make sure you check our links at rockhopperworkshops.com, as well as in Photo PXL under the workshop section. As we proceed, the first thing you're gonna find in the box is this is a maintenance tank and you get two, one's already installed, but the printer uses a lot of ink when it charges up. So the first uh, maintenance box will fill fairly quickly. So you have a second maintenance box, which uh, we'll keep off to the side for now. In addition, this printer is so easy to set up, you get what's basically called a quick start guide. And if you open it up, all the instructions that you need to do the printer and get it set up are right here. And of course, one of the very first things we need to do is get it out of the uh, box. So I'm gonna put these aside. And I have to say that I'm kind of a, a veteran at setting these P900s up and P600s and P700s and a lot of Epson printers. So you know, I've kind of got the hang of it by now. Uh, but one of the fun things that we always enjoy when we unpack an Epson printer is all the blue tape that comes with it. I'm gonna be setting the printer up over here. I'll show you in a second. And uh, we'll move the camera so you can see where that's going to be. I've got a nice cart, perfectly sized for that. And let's get on with that particular aspect. I'll join you back here in a second. Hi, this is the location for my P900. And it sits on top of an Ultra HD Seville cart. I'll be doing an article about these great carts that are on wheels, they've got cabinet drawers and they can do all sorts of cool things. But the P900 is now ready for the ultimate tape takeoff. It's, it's kind of a legend in the industry. Uh, Epson uses a lot of glue tape to package their printers and it hides all over the place. One of the fun things about getting a printer is seeing if you can find all the blue tape. And it's kind of different because when Canon does printers, they use red tape. But in any case, we're going to go on the blue tape search right now and get out of all the blue tape so we can put our ink cartridges in and get this printer fired up. So have fun watching this. Thank you. 
As you can see, I've gotten all the blue tape off the printer, and that was quite an adventure, always is. And I've also taken the liberty to unpack from the cellophane cartridge uh, protection uh, packages the ink so that it's set to go. And what we're going to be doing now is turning the printer on, which involves pushing the power button. And it's going to ask us to choose a language and time and date and so forth. And uh, we'll also do that at this particular time. So we're going to select English and uh, daylight saving time winter. I'm going to go on month, day, and year. And now it's asking me what the date is. So 01-23-2023. And we say OK. And I'm going to go on the 12-hour time format. And the time is, according to my Apple Watch, uh, 4.05 p.m. So we're going to put 04.05 and hit the p.m. button and say OK. And information. Ink cartridge supplied with your printer is used during the initial setup. The remaining amount of the setup ink cartridges and service life of the maintenance box is limited after the initial ink filling. Let me make a, a suggestion here. If you're watching this before you buy the P900 printer, buy an extra set of ink, a whole set to go with it, because these are only for installation, and it actually says initial cartridge on it, and you're going to go through this ink pretty quick in the charge, and of course, that's why they also give you a second maintenance box, which is located in here, and we'll look at that in a little bit. And uh, that gets filled up pretty quickly, too, as all the ink lines in the print head are charged for the first time. So let's install the ink at this point, and we'll wait for the machine to cycle through, and then we'll make our first print. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, we're ready to start installing ink cartridges. And uh, before we do that, you should see that the maintenance cartridge is right here. So it's right down in the lower right corner. And it's behind a little cover, so be careful opening it. Be careful closing it, but that's where the uh, cartridge is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these ink cartridges, and we're going to put it in the appropriate spot. VLM, for example, goes to VLM. And you just push it in until it clicks. It's rather easy to do. You can't put the wrong cartridge in the wrong slot, or you can't put the right cartridge in the wrong slot, however you want to go. So we'll just do a, a quick loadout here. Light gray. MK. By the way, you will find an MK and a PK. And if you're not familiar with those, PK stands for photo black, M stands for matte black. So don't get confused and just understand what that's about when the time comes. Violet, that's a new color in their lineup and that's gonna help uh, with a lot of these uh, uh, fine art colors that we're gonna be doing. And then we just put our cyan filter in. Now all our ink cartridges are now in the uh, system here, so it's pretty cool. I'm gonna take a quick picture of it. When we're at the particular point where everything's in, we're just gonna close the cartridge. And the system is going to do recognizing. And it's gonna pump away and make all sorts of noises for a little bit of time. And uh, we'll be back when it's finished, but it's now charging all the ink lines running back and forth, making sure everything is the way it is. When it completes itself, and there's a gauge here that tells you it's gonna take about 15 minutes. Uh, when it's finished and complete, then we will come back and make our first test print. It's pretty simple so far, isn't it? Well, it's been 15 minutes, and our printer is now set up and ready to go. It's asked me to put some paper in the paper feeder. Pretty self-explanatory. You should be able to figure that out on your own. One of the things I am going to do is bring out the tray. And it's now time to do a nozzle check to make sure that the installation and everything has gone as smoothly as possible. So we go into the maintenance area, and here it says print nozzle check, and we just do a start, and let's see what happens. If you see the ink level at this point, we're about one third on all the inks. So you don't get a full set of ink when you purchase this printer, and it does use a bit of ink to 
uh, get things started, but you certainly have enough ink to uh, make some prints, which we're going to do now. So let's see how the uh, ink check looks, where it's coming out. This control panel is very good. You can read all about that and how to set things up and you can turn an internal light on. It's quite nice. So that quickly we get this. We've got our ink check and we are pretty much perfect. Uh, our very light magenta could probably use a little bit of cleaning up, which we'll try to do, but I think we are in good shape to try to make a real print. And we need to do a few things before we do that. I'm going to basically say one more time here, that's not right, let it do a, a quick start and it'll print another one and we might have to do uh, a nozzle clean. Now one of the things that you want to do uh, occasionally, especially maybe every morning before you start up, is to do a nozzle check and make sure that all the patterns for the colors are coming out uh, where they're perfect and not broken apart. And if they are, you can go ahead and you can do basically a print cleaning. And there's a couple different print cleaning um, modes in the P900 printer and pick the right one for what you're trying to do. Right now it's running print head cleaning. It's gonna take about five minutes. Do not open any covers and turn power off or anything like this. And uh, kind of a, another step involved to make sure that you're gonna get the premium and ultimate quality that you want out of your printer. The first thing we do regarding setting up our printer drivers is we go up to the system menu, find system settings, System settings will automatically open up a new window. After you open up the system settings, this is the window you're shown. What we want to do is scroll down and go to printers and scanners. Click on the printer and scanner menu and you'll be given some choices of Possibly printers that are already installed. This may, area may also be blank in case you haven't installed. You can see I already have an 8550 installed, a PM400, an Epson SC700, and an Epson Workforce 7720. What we want to add today is the P900 printer. So we go to Add Printers, and you'll get a box that pops up, and you're given, given a list of printers that it sees that are connected. And you can see here we have a P900, and it gives us two choices for the P900. And this part is very important. You get a choice for Bonjour or a choice for the TCPIP. Do not, I repeat, do not select Bonjour. Bonjour will not work with wireless printing through the Epson system like we will be using and other software. Don't select Bonjour. This is the thing that they don't tell you very well in the manual. So we go back here and we select the Epson P900 series IP. Epson TCIP. And you can see down here, it highlights the fact that that's the printer and uses for the SC or the P900 series. And all you need to do is just add that. And it does the installation for you and you'll now find that the P900 is installed up here. And now you can go into the menu and you can look at the Epson printer. You can look at all the different there, settings that it has. You can make sure you have the latest version and in options and supplies, for example, it will open up another dialog window, which allows you to check on your computer, all the different things you might want to set for parameters, the supply levels of the printer, and the utility where you can actually print a test page. Simple as that. Follow these instructions carefully and you shouldn't have any problem making your printer work for you the way you expect. But this is important that you select the Series IP. Okay, we are back and hooked up and we've made our first print. So let me show you how easy it is to make a print. I've done the nozzle check. This print looks really, 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 really good. Thank you have to agree that it looks nice. This is just a standard uh, test print that I use. Um, but essentially, what we're gonna do is we set everything up in Epson Print Layout. And then all I gotta do is hit the print button. And it 
sends everything over to the printer. You can see that it turns into uh, receiving data. And watch how fast the print comes out. Paper is going to feed through the back, very silent. There we go. And we are now printing. And we have a picture of the print area over here, which is pretty cool and lets us take a look at what we're printing and what the uh, time left and what paper and what quality and whether we're doing overcoat and so forth. Uh, we'll explain that more in an Epson print layout video that will be coming. Uh, but this is printing from the computer. Now we can do this also from the iPad, which I'll show you next. Let's just wait for the print to come out, almost here. It's almost as fun as making a print in a tray. You shake the tray and you get it, you kind of shake this, and the next thing you know, you've got a full color print coming out of the printer with exceptional image quality. And this P900 does an exceptional job on the image quality. And using the Epson print layout and matching the papers. Now, you do have to input paper uh, size and paper type over here in the dialog box prior to printing. And you do the same thing in Epson print layout. And uh, with the matching and everything, out comes your, your print. So here it comes now, almost finished. Looks really, really nice. And here we go. So there we have it. And the colors look good. The gradation looks good. I don't see any banding. I'm really happy. I printed this on a, a breed of surface, variety of surface, depending on whether you're talking to me or somebody else. But you get the point. And I'm very happy with the image quality. Let's see what we can do from the iPad. Finally, I'm going to show you the fact that one of the beauties of the 900 and the P700 uh, and even the uh, 8550 is the fact that you can print from your mobile devices, whether it be your phone or your iPad. And you use Epson print layout. And as you can see, I've got Epson print layout there. And I put a print uh, in the layout. It's quite simple to do. And since this is about setting up the printer and printing, uh, we won't go into that, but I've selected my printer. I selected my paper media style. I've selected my paper size. I'm going to go off the rear paper feed on maximum quality. So you can basically see that there's a whole bunch of settings there that I've used. And you can see I've picked a, a picture, kind of a rather weird picture. And all I'm going to do is just hit print. And all of a sudden, that quickly, it's going over here, wireless. This means I can work somewhere else in the room or I can work from my computer and not have to be close to the printer and wired to the printer as long as I'm on that network. I'm uh, making my prints. So let's see how this one looks. This will be a little bit of a different kind of uh, print. But I think you can see the versatility of the P900, the ease of use, which I think I've got to stress more than everything else. Making prints now is within reach of anybody. Essentially for the price of this printer, which is uh, around $1,300, and I'm sure you can get uh, some good pricing if you shop around or there's sales and specials on it. But once you set it up, which takes maybe a half an hour to do, get it hooked up. Now I have it hooked up by USB to my desktop computer, but I also have it hooked up to the network so I can print from it instantly. Very, very easy to do. Let's take a look at this print. And by the way, Epson print layout also works in horizontal or vertical. Really pretty cool. Now you can print from Lightroom if you want to print through the USB port of your computer. You can print from image print, which is what I do an awful lot of my printing from also. So there's a number of ways you can hook to these printers and make prints. But this P900, along with its sister, the P700, which I have at home, are fabulous printers. And the versatility allows me to be anywhere in the house, and I can have my friends hook up to the network, and they can make prints while you know, we're, they're visiting, or I can take pictures with my iPhone and then send them to the printer for souvenirs of people come and visit. So, I mean, there's all sorts of possibilities, and that's the beauty of making prints. Let's start sharing prints. Let's have something to hold on to. Okay, we got a few more minutes. It'll come out. 
here it is. This is the uh, print that we just made on the Epson P900 using wireless from the Epson print layout on my iPad. It's really very, very cool. I can do this for my iPhone or my iPad. It allows me even to do it for my laptop wirelessly. And the point is, is I can, don't have to have a cable, don't have to be wired in. As long as I'm on the network and can reach the network, Epson print layout can print out to any one of these. And uh, it's just amazing the kind of quality you get, first run prints. Um, and it's easy. All you gotta do is select the paper and the paper size and uh, away you go. It matches up. You gotta do it on both. You gotta match it up with your iPad and it also has to be on the face of the, the printer here. Uh, but if you do those two things, you're gonna get pretty much perfect prints right out of the box. And uh, it's pretty damn nice. I'm using the Burrita paper here, the Burrita paper, and it's a um, uh, beautiful finish. Easily done, done clean as a whistle. I wanna thank you for uh, stopping by and watching me set up my new Epson P900. I have the Epson P700 at home as my sister printer. Does the same sort of thing, but I can use that one at home. And this does up to 1722 prints. You're gonna watch us in future videos doing a little bit of work on the 17 by 22, but printing can be easy. You just gotta take a few steps and we'll talk all about that. Don't forget we have the fine art printing workshops coming up and being held throughout the year and they're gonna be a lot of fun to come to. There's three days of heavy duty printing and learning and you'll get the chance to take home all the prints you make during that workshop. So you look for information at PhotoPXL and Rockhopper workshops on that in the very near future. In the meantime, thank you very much. I hope you're having a good safe winter so far. From the Indianapolis Art Center in downtown Indianapolis, I'll see you next time.